is Sandra Baltazar Martinez. I am a senior public information officer here at UC Riverside. And walking through the exhibit as it was being installed, I really connected with Christina Fernandez's Manuela Stitched series of photos because they really triggered that memory of when I was a child and I went to work with my mom who worked at a sweatshop is what I call in, in the city of El Monte for a good 20, 20 something years um, since she immigrated in about 1982 from northern Mexico and that was really her life. So summers and during school breaks when I was a kid and before I became a latchkey kid, <laughs> latchkey kid and I was able to stay home, um, I had to go to work with my mom. Um, it wasn't full days of work, but it, it definitely did help. My mom was what they called a planchadora, which was somebody who irons, right? But she didn't iron with a, a hand iron. It was one, one of those big irons where there's a top portion of it and it's all done by steam so it's got to be real tactical and real fast so that the material is not burned as they press down on the material and every time I remember vividly as, as she pressed down every time there was a huge cloud of steam that sort of surrounded her body. She'd do that two, two or three times to get the garment really nice and pressed and ready to go. A lot of all the women in this factory really worked for many well-known companies here. It was everything from sports outfits to little children's outfits for theme parks, blouses, dresses, pants, everything you can think of. And so my job was to stay with my mom in this particular corner and I helped her trim the edges of some of the garments. It was called la trimiadora, which is your trim, right? It's a, it's a Spanglish word for trimming the edges with these special scissors that, that these women used to have um, carry in their pocket so that the issue quickly solved when there was lots of edges or uneven edges that needed to be trimmed. And so I used to just grab these and trim the hilo, right? The, the either yarn or whatever other material they were using so that it didn't have any loose ends and it was in perfect condition before it was bagged. and pushed into a rack so that it can be eventually transported out of the sweatshop and into whatever story was going to be going. But there's one particular frame that has a, a small poem, you know, a small story that talks about this woman's feeling of when La Migra would come over, the immigration officials. Back in the 80s and 90s, Immigration officials showing up unannounced to these factories was very common if somebody called and said there's a group of undocumented individuals working at these factories, they would show up unannounced, but the factory owners were, uh, I guess, well connected, they had a network, so if somebody said, hey, immigration is a certain location, they'd call the other factory sweatshop workers or owners and uh, the, the warehouse, the sweatshop was immediately shut down and those metal curtains were dropped and every sewing machine just completely stopped as if showing that there was nobody there. And that's why when Christina Fernandez shows some of those images, I know that it, outside it looks like they're seemingly abandoned, sometimes tagged buildings, but really inside is a very busy world of women mainly, I'm sure there was men as well, but mainly women sewing and you can hear the, the sewing machines going full throttle. Back in the 80s and 90s when my mom started working, she probably got paid a couple dollars an hour and that was because they called it por pieza, which is they paid you by piece. So if your job was to sew buttons, they paid you per button or per zipper or per, in my mom's case, per piece that she steamed, that she ironed. And so the faster you could do it, obviously the faster you would earn money an hour. And so back then, I think my mother's checks were probably 150 a week um, after working, you know, 40, 50 hours. And little did we know, obviously, you know, we were, we were recent Mexican immigrants back then. My mother came to this country about three years before she went back to get my sisters and I, and we just didn't know that that you know what $150 was. We know what it is now as adults, but back then we didn't, and and um, so 
those photos just sort of triggered all these memories of my mother's sacrifice, right? That it's a lot more than just sewing or, or steaming material blouses, but it really speaks to the immigrant experience that Cristina Fernandez tries to capture in her, in her photography. And for people like me who live that, the photo is very much uh, filled with story and memory about that immigrant experience and, and also the current immigrant experience that, that still lives with us today, even 30, 40 years later.